today on 15 on 15. We revisit 15 on 15's 2012 hotel segment where general managers of properties discuss Aruba's tourism industry. We will have Ewald Demons from Bukuti revealing the history and concept of his successful adults-only boutique resort. And we will report from you straight from Eagle Beach for the International Beach Tennis Tournament. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yanta Liu. The tourism industry on this island accounts for 80% of Aruba's GDP. In 2012, 15 on 15 ran a special hotel segment where I sat down one-on-one -on -one with general managers of various properties to find out the concept of their hotel as well as their perspective on Aruba's tourism sector. Let's revisit some of these to gain perspective on how things have changed for the better or worse in two years' time. We start with the former general manager of the Marriott, Kevin Schwab. Kevin Schwab has been the general manager of the Marriott Hotel for two years. The Marriott property was opened on the island in 1995. The largest hotel corporation believes in switching up leadership roles every few years to keep motivation and growth coming. I think what, what our company likes to do is, is make sure that two things. One, we get to know the market, so they don't want to move us too quick, but I'd say after four or five years, they say, you know what, maybe it's time for someone to come in with a new vision. Because if I create a vision for four years and I can bring the hotel to, let's say, this level, someone else comes in and says, all right, I, I, you've already got it there, I'm only going to make it better. And so one of the key strategies of taking local talent and developing them is that when I leave, someone could come back and say, okay, I've moved this hotel forward, now I'll come back and do the same thing in Aruba. When Mr. Schwab first started, the Aruba Marriott executive team was nine males to one female. Since then, diversity has been key. This, he believes, is also an aspect separating themselves from the rest of the resorts. What I'm also proud of, I think, and sets us apart is, in nine, when I first got here, we had uh, two executive committee members that were women out of ten. At this point, we have five, so we've kind of balanced that and we have diversity and a better understanding of our guests because half of our guests are women. You need to have half of your team to be women, and I think it also helps us set us apart from everyone else. A corporation with a diverse team that strives to develop both men and women, as well associates from abroad and local, is the only way to go. I think in my personal vision, you can't run a hotel that half of your customers or half of your, your associates, as we call them, are women and you have a team of all men, you'll never understand your people. And if we don't take care of our associates, they won't take care of the guests and they won't come back. So it's a business initiative as well as a personal initiative that I believe, and this is just my opinion, but there still exists discrimination. And so helping women is helping the business because not everybody does it so you have a better pool to, 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 to pull from. Mr. Schwab says the Marriott recently revealed the Tradewinds project. He says nowadays there are two types of travelers those who go with children others who want to only be surrounded by adults. By segregating two parts of their property has helped to set themselves apart from every other hotel chain to segregate ourselves into two hotels within one and so we have the trade winds uh, club which is for adults only and then we have an adults only pool that we built last year so by separating that and saying we're an all, we're an adult destination and we're a family friendly on the other side so we have two sides within the hotel uh, the adult pool and the all-purpose pool and then we also have the adult floor and then the floor for everyone else. So we kind of have that strategy, which nobody else, in my opinion, can do. We will continue with another hotel segment when we return. Here is a sneak peek. After the break, the success story of Bukuti and Tata, which is arguably Aruba's most successful independently owned and operated property. Bakuti and Tata Hotel is arguably the most successful boutique hotel that is independently owned and operated here on the island. On top of that, this property has been able to excel and maximize ways in being environmentally friendly. 
Here's Ewald Beemans from Bukuti and Tata. Ewald Beemans at first opened up a hotel that was just like the rest of them. But as time went on, he decided to focus in on one niche market. Bukuti is a couples only resort. It certainly seems that Mr. Beemans has a good set of strategies behind his belt as his hotel runs on 90% occupancy all year round. He says this is mainly because even during the worst economic times, lovers are tying the knot everywhere. Uh, honeymooners and, and weddings and, and that kind of uh, part of the society, even in, in, the, in the worst of times, continues to happen. People go on honeymoon, people get married. Besides for being an adult-only facility, Bukuti and Tower Resorts are also very green. The property is known for its environmental programs. Hoteliers, listen up. The green investment has actually allowed Ewald to maintain his room rates. The increases that we have experienced over the last years in terms of energy costs, we have been partly offsetting these costs by saving energy. Uh, that meant one thing, that we didn't have to increase our rates as dramatically as some hotels had to, that didn't have a environmental or a, a energy uh, efficient program in place. When couples check in, they receive champagne. A water bottle are given to guests, encouraging them to refill the water bottle instead of buying bottled water. They are also given a small MacBook laptop to bring with them to their rooms. Ewalt says it's these kind of details that keeps bringing the guests back. Details is what make make a, a memorable vacation. It's one remembers the uh, the environmental issues, the other one remembers that little door sign that says welcome back, or the third one remembers that uh, gesture that somebody uh, was extra nice or friendly or helpful. It, it is a series of things that make a, make a, uh, a vacation a success for somebody. And it can be from, from the friendliness of the staff to uh, a decently uh, uh, lit up room, to a wonderful meal, to an experience with a taxi driver or customs agent for that matter. It's a total experience. Let's take a quick break. This is what's coming up next. Coming up right after the break, straight from Eagle Beach, we have an update on Aruba's International Beach Tennis Tournament 2014. Welcome back from the break and we are here at the DV Beach Tennis Tournament and of course it is the 2014 edition. We have some players with us here that we want to ask some questions about. So let's start with you sir. Where are you from first of all and um, how is the event going? I'm from Portugal and uh, I'm loving Aruba and uh, the tournament. Is this your first time here and, uh, and tell me the category you play and the, and the competition level? It's my first time. I'm playing in uh, pro level or open level. And what is it about the Aruba tournament that, that you like so much so far? Uh, I like the weather because in Portugal it's raining and like 5 or 10 degrees and uh, very strong players so I like to play against the best. Perfect. Now besides for Portugal, we have 25 different countries um, that's participating in this beach tennis tournament actually. Um, so we have some ladies here who are, I believe, from Réunion or are you from somewhere else? Portugal. You're also from Portugal? Yes. Um, can you tell me what is it about um, the Islands tournament that's really captivating your attention and that you're enjoying so much? The, the level, the, the players, the sun, the weather, the, the spirit is very, very good. It's different. The, this tournament is different. And um, how many years have you been playing for and do you think you'll be returning for next year? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. How many years have you been playing beach tennis? Uh, uh, five years, six. And how many different tournaments have you been going to? Uh, a lot uh, in Europe. Uh, this first time uh, out of Europe. And will you be coming back next year? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and for you girls, where are you guys from and, um, and, and what level of beach tennis are you playing? We come from Reunion Island, which is a French island close to South Africa. This is my third time here in Aruba. And uh, Aruba is a perfect place for playing beach tennis. The level is really big here and the place is really nice. The mood is really good. So Now Reunion, where you're from, um, beach tennis is a big sport there. So how would you compare the tournament back at home and then the tournament here in Aruba? 
Mm, the tournament, okay, it's not the same, but I mean, we have a really good, nice tournament in, uh, in March, which is a G1 too, and with big uh, audience possible too. And uh, in the Reunion Island, we have a lot of players too, so this this uh, this is the same part we are. how do you feel about so many different countries coming together in one place in such a small island and then having one thing in common and that is the passion for beach tennis so how do you feel about being a part of that mm, good Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> yeah, good uh, no, go. Go, go, caroline, go. <laughs> caroline caroline you tell me don't be shy <laughs> caroline you tell me what um what do you like about the fact that there's 25 different countries in aruba for one week and everyone having the same thing in common which is beach tennis mm. <laughs> i don't know it's nice it's very nice lot of country it's it's good it's beach tennis for me perfect thank you so much guys success good luck <laughs> And signing off right here at the DV Beach Tennis Arena, actually the Amstel Bright Arena, I'm Yantu Liu and be sure to join us again tomorrow night for a brand new edition of 15 on 15. And don't forget, Friday night at 8.30pm, after Noticia Awanoji, I will be broadcasting to you from Eagle Beach. And then on Sunday, Kadoji Kok and I will be live for the main event straight from Eagle Beach. <laughs>